Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Vidotional. <coughs> hands up, hands up. I think I have a, a bug in my throat hey, for not hey. eating. Actually, I don't have a bug in my throat. We just got we done just with done the power of that. blessing and there I've is, had to rebuke her twice is, since that there five is, minute break. My throat is clear, my belly is not starving. About Rom's food. hair looks like a delicious eggplant parm. Like, I'm just starting to see things. That's how hungry I am. Honestly, if this daggone mic starts picking up my rumbling stomach, that will be so embarrassing. Listen, guys, I'm sorry about the shenanigans here. We're gonna talk about how to pray for the lost. A lot of you people have been praying incorrectly for those that are lost in your family, in your workspace, in your school, wherever. And so praying about specific sin that people deal with is not the way out of. You might be dealing with somebody that has a heroin problem, a spouse that has cheated on you. You don't pray to get rid of the sin. You have to pray for the heart, a transformation of the heart. And so in Mark 7, 17 through 20, should I read? Yes. Okay, great. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit so you can ident identify people by their actions. Again, Mark 7, 17 through 20. And so you understand that if there is bad fruit, if there are bad things that are being produced by certain individuals, then you understand that there's a rot in the root. There's, there's something that needs to be uprooted from its roots in order for it to produce good fruit. And so it tells us in Romans 11, 17, but some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off and you Gentiles who are branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in so now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree Amen. that is that is powerful because at one point we were all from wicked evil wild trees but when we decided to give our hearts to the Lord that tree was uprooted and everything that was of wickedness everything that was uh, uh, sin, everything that represented the devil was completely burnt off and we were grafted in. We were grafted in to God's special olive tree. Grafted, what does that even mean? My sister didn't even know what it means. I mean, I, whatever. Since that word grafted isn't really I'm used. I'm only human. If you cut me, I will bleed. Behind this perfect facade, <laughs> there's a human. Um, I didn't know that you could take a tag on branch and stick it onto another tree and then it would survive. I didn't know that. Since most people can't get that concept, look it up, look at the trees um, that have been They grafted. tape it and then um, they're like, this, this, tree, this branch is like, <laughs> and then the branch goes, gets a right attached right to the trunk of the tree and then it gets taped up and then the, the branch. See, and then, that and was then like a, a, a summary of what, what it means to be grafted. Could it have been better? Absolutely. <laughs> so we're, I'm trying to think of the, the, the grafted is, is very a very obsolete way of looking at things because, you know, Well, we're not farmers. We don't have apple here. I, orchards. Anyway, and. so what what does that mean? It means like a transplant. And so when, when a kidney fails on somebody and you need a transplant, you can get another kidney, put it in there, and it works perfectly in sync with your body. Fun fact, as an identical twin, my kidneys would work in your body. Who cares? That doesn't even have to Fun do fact. about anything. Thank you. I appreciate well, that. Well, you wouldn't even need like the antibiotics and stuff to like so that your body rejects, you know, like if you take a transplant, right? You have to get like all these antibiotics or whatever to, so that your body doesn't think it's like an, an organism that has come to affect your, your body. So it basically, you have to, you're always on like this, this medication so that your body doesn't reject the kidney, said kidney. We don't have to worry about that because first of all, we have the supernatural. Thank you um, for to completely help. negating but wait, this, this, but basically, this like, picture. It, like say us. identical twins, they could just take the kidney. Okay. Identical. Twin and not ever have to be in like medication for it. Why me? Listen, isn't that cool? Just Kenny? shut your face for a second. Um, so, so, so I'm never gonna need one of those, but anyway, what you have to understand is when you get like another organ transplanted into your body, not when, it works. If, <laughs> 
when someone is <laughs> We're not speaking organ transplants to any of my viewers. This is a picture. <laughs> this is an illustration. When a sinner gets a, uh, an organ transplant. The when someone who can't stand on the, the blessing of the great I am <laughs> decides to have an organ transplant. Listen, the transplant, a uh, perfect illustration transplant. of of how we as children can become one with the body of God. When we connect ourselves with the body of God, when we That's connect true. ourselves with the things of God, then all of a sudden, what was what was producing bad fruit now produces good fruit. And so you never approach in prayer, God, take away this, take away that. That's not the problem. There's a heart condition. There is a root at the base of the tree, and it needs to be uprooted. And that's how you pray. That's how you take a stance. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those oh, who I don't believe. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Who are those that don't believe? The lost, the unbeliever, the unsaved people. Uh, they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. And then in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 16, I'll just read verse 16. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And so now you understand that there's a power at work behind that sin that's been captivated their hearts. There's a blindness that the devil has placed on every unbeliever that will lead them to hell. There's blinders. You got to pray against the blinders. You know, one of the things that Jesus himself said for us to pray about was for more laborers. And so be the laborer, be that fulfillment of scripture. Say, I'm going to be that laborer. I'm going to work out in the vineyard and bring people in to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, the Bible says those who refresh others themselves, themselves will be, be refreshed. refreshed. And so what you do to somebody else, that's going to come right back to you. And so it's so important for you to quit praying against the sin. Keep praying against the whatever, whatever. Bind the strong man first and foremost. And then quit worrying about them, crying about them. But you know, the attack is so strong on my sister's life. <laughs> no. If you understood that there's a force, that there's a power behind uh, that person that is, you know, trying to take them to hell, then you get a fight in you. You know, you, you keep praying for the same thing? You keep praying for the same person because they can negate your prayer. Who can? The person. A person's will is stronger than your your power. If somebody chooses for themselves not to be saved or whatever, that their choice trumps the word of God and our prayers. And so it could totally negate it. That's why we have to be diligent in praying and binding the strong man. When you pray for the unsaved one, you have to continue to pray because they could be in sin. They could say things that will negate it. And that's when you have to pray that the strong man be broken, that the strong man be bound, and that you would send more laborers. God, convict them. Let let your presence come upon them every single day. The power of sin working behind whatever it is that they're doing. If they have sexual, multi, like lots of multiple sexual partners, AIDS could be present. I curse the, the, the spirit of sexually transmitted diseases over my son and daughter. They, they will not have its, their place. And so if you continue on praying for every person in your family, like, no, the, the power is broken. God, you know, shine the light on their day. Send people that, that you know, if he doesn't want to talk to you, or if he's totally like blocked you out or whoever it is. You know, pray that God would send those people, it, even wherever they're at, in the bar, in the office, to tell them Jesus loves you. Once you bind that and once you say, God, fill them with your life every single day, things like start shifting because all of a sudden they'll say, wait, why, why do I feel like going to church? Why do I feel like picking up my Bible? Why do I blah, 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 blah. What's the difference between that, like a prayer that's like repetitive? A lot of times what people do is they'll take that prayer and then it turns into like this repetitive, like if you continue, continue to knock, the door will open. You continue to these are like specific things like for your body like a, bo a bodily prayer like God's already taken that from you like you don't have to pray about that you just have to receive it into your being you don't have to pray of your cancer over and over and over again because then that over and over again starts being based out of fear that God didn't hear you the first 10 times you prayed it's not salvation for you for a, a salvation for a lost person now you're not dealing with you you're dealing with them and their, their free will, their free moral agents, they could do whatever they want. If they choose not to get saved or want to get saved, aja, I saw.
then that's 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 what ha- has to ha- that that's what can happen. But your prayers and binding the strong man, commanding that veil to be ripped off, commanding for the laborers, pray that there be laborers in the vineyard. Pray that there'd be more workers out in the fields. And so that's what Jesus was saying. Pray, pray, pray that those people are out and readily. <laughs> that <was> never, <laughs> we're not doing that. Pray that it's readily yeah, available. Okay. That, for, was, that was the one where you just one and done. <laughs> one and done is one and done is absolutely necessary for the things that are applied to scripture that God says belong to every believer. And you can't pray for finances. The Bible says give and it shall be given to you. Right. So no need to pray. If you want to increase, you got to give like you've never given before. And f- for bodily things, everything was taken on, on the, the cross at Calvary, on his body, by his stripes. We were healed. So if we were healed, then all we have to do is believe that we're we're healed and it's done. So so you can't pray, God, take this away, take this away, take this away. When he's like, yo, it's, it's already done. The Holy Spirit. You don't have to keep praying for the Holy Spirit. He says it's yours. It's a free gift. Just take it, grab it, believe it. You know what I mean? All of these things are implemented for the believer because of Jesus Christ. Now, salvation is different. Salvation is something that I can't force you to be saved. You have to be saved. That revelation has to come to you, you know, by the Spirit of God and by that veil being broken. That's why when my brother wasn't serving the Lord, I would say, God, break that power of, of darkness, break the power of sin over his life, and all of a sudden, we were in the hospital bed and he, he gave his heart to the Lord. Just like that, he gave it. And I thought that was too easy. That just, it was almost in disbelief. I'm like, after two years of saying, God, just save him, save him, save him, save him. But no, and then I started praying. We saw, I, Jonathan and I would start praying and believing God, break the power of sin over his life. Whatever enemy is on the outskirts of things, trying to reel them in, expose them. All of a sudden, let them come to the realization like, whoa, what are you doing in my life? Mm-hmm. Why are you here? Let let there be things that like, you know, connecting the dots. Wait a minute, you did this last week. Why? Hmm. That, there's something wrong there. I'm going to cut you off. And then in cutting that person off, all of a sudden, the strong man is broken. You know what I mean? And so, so then you could go in there and 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 take what belongs to you. Because I thought it was a one shot deal. No, I, I for said, the unsaved person, you you continue in prayer, that makes not, sense. That not makes fear. Sense. Oh Lord! But you, but people can negate your prayers just like you can negate your prayers by saying something stupid. They can negate their prayers by doing something, living in sin, having multiple sexual partners. That person, it's a free moral. He's a he or she is a free moral agent. And so if you bind it for every day, you get before your knees. I'm doing this so that he'll be saved. Father, send labors. And I'm telling you, once you do that to other people, you see him another kid that reminds you of your son you go and tell him about the blood of Jesus about his sacrifice on the cross and lead him to the Lord and I'm telling you that's what's gonna shift that's what's gonna break forget praying prayers uh, in fear and defeat of like Ugh. so many especially women in the ministry have allowed for their unsaved children to be this point of defeat and anxiety and worry in their life and instead of saying lord you know the 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 word has already been planted into this person's life and you said in your word that they shall shall not depart from it and so father i curse anything that would cause this person to depart from the word that's already been implanted in 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 this person's life and so when you take a stance like that father i bind the power of of darkness i take hold of that whatever relationship is is sucking him right to the pit of hell i break it now in the name of Jesus, send your workers, Lord, and then be the worker. Be that person. The lost ones. I feel the Holy Ghost. Okay. Go ahead. So, Heavenly Father, we just take authority now over every unsaved person yes, that's Lord. watching, every unsaved person represented in the lives of these viewers, Lord, and we bind the strong men. We yes, curse Lord. the power of the devil Jesus. and the veil that's been placed upon their lives and in their eyes, Lord. Father, everything, every hindrance, the knowledge of the Word of God that that's been buried in in people's lives, Lord. I pray, Father, that that would come back up. I pray, Father, that that would be something that would be completely uprooted from their lives. Sin, the power of, of, of sin and darkness be broken off of that individual now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you would begin to lift up more people, Father. Send out more people, Father. Through this video, oh God, I pray that you would begin to ignite a fire with every person, every believer out there, Lord God, that they would take the onus of getting people saved, of getting people healed, Father. Let us do the work that you've called for every 
every person to do in the name of Jesus. And right now, Father, we call those unsaved people and we, we call them saved by faith in the name of Jesus. And we will be diligent in seeing that our prayers will be answered by the things that we do in everyday life, Lord. Father, bind the strong man. I, I, I bind the strong man. I bind the curse. I bind every blinder. I bind yes. every wicked thing that was implanted within them to, to steer them to the life of death. Every relationship, every oh, friendship, Jesus, everything that would pull them back to the place of death, hell, and the grave. Yes. I cut its hand off right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that your angels will go about. May your presence even now yes, shine God. strong, Father. Let them just feel it, Father. Let them just be like, I don't even know. I don't even know why I feel the presence of God, but I feel the the presence of God. I and I pray, God, Father, God. right now Hallelujah. that your presence would come and overtake them, Father. Yes. Let there be miracles, Lord. Let Hallelujah. there be uh, uh, major yes, divine interventions, Father major roadblocks for for the kingdom of hell father and through this through the through the acknowledgement of what you've done on the cross what you paid for that that the power now lies within us i thank you father that we take it and we use it to fight back the devil and to take back what belongs to ours i claim now that our children will be saved Hallelujah. our family will be saved our friends will be saved in the name of jesus, name of jesus. amen never the same Never the same. No. God bless. Peace. Deuces.